I met my husband 45 years ago. We've been together ever since. I met him 45 years ago at a service station. His car was on one rack. My car was on the other rack. And we've had car trouble together ever since then. When we first got married, we had a little MG Midget to drive. Anybody remember MG Midgets? Well, I mean, they're about that big. So we had these little, this little MG Midget. We went on our honeymoon in that. We had so much fun with that. And then a while later, I got pregnant. And my daddy said, you, here's an important lesson for you to learn. You don't ever need to have more kids than you got seats in your car. So since we only had two seats and there was two of us, we traded that car in and we got us a brand new 1978 Monte Carlo. Light blue with a dark blue Landau top. Anybody know what a Landau top is? You're as old as I am. <laughs> a Landau top, it was beautiful. We lived in a little town named Leeds, Alabama. And when you lived in Leeds in that day, it was a big deal for somebody to get a brand new car. And so we were anxious to show off our brand new car. And so we went after church on Sunday night, we went to everybody, where everybody went for church after church on Sunday night. And that was to the Pizza Hut. <laughs> so we showed up at the Pizza Hut and everybody in town was there. And we walked in just so proud of our new car. And so we were telling everybody, we got a new car, we got a new car. So when we got ready to leave, all our friends lined up at the windows watching us as we drove off in our new car. Well, we had happened to get the front parking place right next to the windows. And when we came out, something amazing happened. Now, I have to back up and tell you this, because my husband and I have always been able to find fun things to do that were cheap, because we always been poor. <laughs> Down south, we call it poor. And so, like we did things like before there was a lot of airport security, we would go to the airport in Birmingham and we'd go down to the gates and then I'd pretend like I was getting off. I'd get in line with people getting off a plane and I'd pretend like I was getting off a plane and he would be at the end and he would see me and he'd say, hey, and he'd hug me, he'd run and we'd hug each other and, and then we'd switch it around and he got off the plane and then I would run. So, we, you know, we've had a long series of doing this through the years, so we were into a new game at that time called I Gotta Pull Through. And what that is, is when you get a pull through in a parking lot, that's a big deal. I'd come home and I'd say, I gotta pull through today. He'd say, I gotta pull through today. We counted our pull throughs. And that night when we came out of that restaurant, that car was parked right in front of the windows and we had a pull through. The car in front of us had left. So not only were they gonna get to see our new car, they were gonna get to see us go forward in our new car. So we got in our car, he put it in drive. I said, we gotta pull through. He put that car in drive and he gunned it and we went. <laughs> Cause we forgot that there was one of those curves right here in front of us. And so everybody kind of laughed. And he said, well, what should I do? Should I back it up now? I said, no, you've already done it now. I said, you might as well just keep it in drive and just keep driving. So he said, okay, so he gunned it again. And we went, again, because we had not remembered that the, car, the park in front of us would also have one of those curbs. So now we are straddled two of those curbs. And he said, well, what should I do? I said, well, you've done it now. We gotta bounce twice either way. So he put it in gear and we went, and all our friends just laughed and laughed and laughed. Well, we kept that Monte Carlo for a few years and then we had a couple of kids. And we decided we needed a minivan. So we got us a Ford Aerostar minivan. <laughs> Man, that thing was pretty. And, and so we drove that thing till the wheels were coming off of it. And one night we were driving through town, and I don't know how to describe this to you, except to just say that that car became possessed by demons. <laughs> it was the craziest thing you've ever seen. 
All of a sudden, the, we had electric windows. All of a sudden, the windows started going up and down. And then the door locks started going just up and down, up and down. And then the lumbar support started inflating and deflating and inflating and deflating. So here we are, car windows going up and down, inflating and deflating. And all of a sudden, my son from the back seat said, Daddy, this car's on fire. And we looked, and there's black smoke just billowing out of the back of it. And I said, what are we going to do? And he said, I'll think of something. <laughs> Could you think quickly, please? So he pulled it over to the edge, and he said, I'm just going to turn it off. And I thought, yeah, that'll fix it. So he turned it off. Well, when he tried to crank it, of course, it did nothing. But there were a couple of guys coming by. They saw us. They stopped. They jumped us off. The car started, and we headed home. And he said, if I can get this car to the dealership tomorrow, I'm going to trade it in. Okay? Now, I had to go to work. So I followed him in my beat-up old car and followed him, left him at the dealership because he made it there. I said, you do whatever you feel like you need to do. I went on to work. When I got home that night, this man had bought a Ford Ranger pickup truck. <laughs> it didn't have an extended cab. It had two seats in it, one for him, and I guess the other one was for me. And we had to go on a six-hour trip to my parents the next weekend. And I said, why did you buy this truck? He said, that'd be a good work truck for me. I said, it's our good car. Mine won't make it on trips. What do you think you're going to do with our children when we have to drive six hours next week? He said, I've been thinking about this. I said, oh, Lord. <laughs> he said, here's what we're going to do. He said, it's got a camper shell. I looked at him, and I said, that's metal, right? He said, yeah. I said, it's August, right? He said, yeah. I said, you're going to put our children in a metal box in August and drive them for six hours? He said, yeah. I said, what are they going to sit on? He said, I already figured that out, too. Oh, gosh. I said, what? He said, I bought some bean bags. <laughs> I looked at those bean bags, and they were vinyl. <laughs> vinyl bean bags in a metal box in August for six hours. <laughs> well, we did it. <laughs> we put our kids in 